electrifying. What a way to open the main card. Yeah. Congratulations on the win. How are you feeling right now? Oh, superb. Absolutely superb. Um, I'm going to wake in the morning. I know that for a fact. I've got some lumps and bumps, man. Did that guy crack hard? Uh, but I've got the job done with some mistakes, learning again from it. Um, and I've just knocked off one of the top prospects in, in Bellator. So I couldn't be happier. We did, yeah, you mentioned he's one of the top prospects. And there was a lot of hype around Kiefer going yeah. into this fight. You kind of went under the radar. Did that help your pressure? or? Um, yeah, a little bit. I think, to be honest, I feel like my whole career has been under the radar. Um, I started off well and got really sloppy near the beginning of my career. So my record's never looked that great. But if you look deeper into my record, I've got some great fighters on there. I've got some great wins. I've made some mistakes early on in my career. And I feel like it's always kept me under the radar. I've been the, uh, the underdog for quite a lot of my fights and I come out on top. Um, I think this fight, finally, live on TV. Um, thank you for Bellator for, for putting me up there on the main card. Um, like I say, this, I have to thank Kiefer because he's off his back for taking the fight against me. Everyone knows I'm a tough fighter. No one really wants this fight because they look at it like, oh, he's the underdog, blah, blah, blah. Um, and he knew it was going to be a test and he took it anyway. And that's where you're going to prove whether you're one of the top guys. I think he learns from this, he comes back stronger, but I think I've just proved how good I am. You definitely have. It was a huge statement. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that. It was a TKO by Dr. Stoppage yeah. after a yeah. really, really, really fast round. Yeah. Um, and you can see how this one keep was straight away. You were over to him saying, we'll do it again. It was an amazing display of sportsmanship. Yeah. Just talk through your feelings on how the fight finished. <sighs> Listen, it's disappointing, obviously. Um, Got to be super disappointing for him being finished anyway. Um, he's never been stopped. And you can argue that's not a, a genuine stoppage. Um, and obviously it's disappointing for me because I don't want any question marks that, oh yeah, would it have carried on if you hadn't cut him and this and that. The fact is I, I cut him. So I've done the damage that does that. But I know how disappointed it is for him. Um, all I wanted to say to him is, man, the guy's a beast. He's an absolute quality fighter. Um, I've watched all his fights because I knew how good he was and I love the way he fights. And the thing is, my coach was said before, this will be the best thing that happens to him is getting beat by me because he'll learn from that, realise where he's got to make the adjustments and he'll get better from that. Um, like I have from each of my losses and what I've learned and stuff like that. And, and he's got a big, bright future in front of him. And I just wanted him to know that and, and say thank you for taking the fight and stuff like that. Because like I say, he, he didn't have to take that fight. Um, it was a catch weight. Obviously, being in lockdown and stuff, it was going to be hard work for me to actually make 155, having my, my baby and being locked down and all this sort of thing. It's been tough. So I appreciate him taking the fight in the first place. And, and, it's, and it's a sport at the end of the day. You can have these guys. Maybe, maybe that's why I'm not so well known, because I don't mouth off. I don't make a big hype about it. Listen, at the end of the day, we go in there and we try and take each other's heads off for 15 minutes. Outside of that, I respect everyone in the game. They're, they're in there fighting and trying to put food on the table for their family. Just like I am. So it's it's a sport. So uh, yeah, that's why I'm I'm so nice to him after the sport and all that. Do you know what I mean? That's the way it is. Kevin. Hey Charlie, congrats on a big victory. Um Thank you. you know, in the beginning it didn't seem to go your way, but then no. you know, the moment you threw that knee, the whole sh momentum of the fight shifted. Yeah. Did, were you looking for that knee as he was going for the takedown, or was that just you know not, by chance? No, not at all. The, the knees weren't really anything I was thinking of. I, the thing we was going for was, um, to start with, I wanted to be long, hit him with my jab, stay away from his brawl. Um, he started a little bit slower than I thought he was going to. I knew he was going to throw the kicks and try to range. Um, and I just got sloppy on my jab and didn't, I didn't want to duck into any of his knees because he's got dangerous knees and elbows. So I didn't want to duck into any of his knees. And by doing that, I didn't duck at all and got caught with his left hook. Um, and like I say, he hits like an absolute train. Um, and I got hit twice with it. And it made me go, shit, oh, I need to just bite down and start fighting, make it a bit of a brawl now. Um, and as soon as I started landing a couple, I feel like I landed a couple of my right hands um, that made him start changing his level, looking for that um, knee, which, which just presented itself. Do you know what I mean? It was just spare of the moment that was going for it. Um, and like you say, once I'd landed that and there was a bit of blood, um, I got top position. Um, I felt like he was on his way out. Um, I could hear his corner saying that I was tiring. Um, and the ref hadn't really warned him that much. He was moving and defending really well. So I didn't want to blow myself out where I thought I was overtaking the fight. I thought he was on his way out. But I didn't want to blow myself out. I could hear him saying there's only 30 seconds left. Um, and I didn't want to push too hard and not get the finish and give him a second second life um, in the second round. So I sucked it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I felt like once I started landing and staying in the pocket and not, not just winging straight into that blooming left hand of his, uh, I was doing much better. You know, you've been one of the luckiest fighters uh, out there right now getting to fight in the pandemic and not a lot of fighters out there. 
explain your uh, whole process through training camp, coming to the bubble, getting ready, all that set up. How has it been? Right. Um, getting back to training was the main key. I mean, I'd spent months in proper lockdown. We was told my missus, my wife was heavily pregnant. So uh, we was told we need to isolate and lock down. We weren't seeing anyone. We were stuck in the flat. Um, then we had our baby and another again, the, the hospital telling us, no, you've got to stay locked down. So I put a lot of weight on, got out of shape, hadn't trained at all for two or three months. Um, so just getting back to training was nice. Um, and luckily I had um, a couple of teammates or a teammate, Sam Patterson, who was fighting before me coming up. So I was in there helping him with his camp, getting my weight down already before I got offered this fight. Um, so then by the time I got offered, it was nice. I was already halfway in to getting in shape and stuff like that. So Nothing really changed. I just upped it and started monitoring my weight and getting my weight down even more. Do you know what I mean? Really dialing it in. So training went pretty well, pretty smoothly. Um, don't get me wrong, making the weight was always difficult. Um, it always is. Uh, so uh, that was that was tough. But being able to, to fight has been amazing. Um, like I say, I've been I've been sitting at home for months, not knowing where the money was going to come from. I ended up on um, Universal Credit because my whole career is fighting and training. And I couldn't teach anything. I couldn't do anything. So I was end up on universal credit for a while um, just to pay bills. Um, so being able to come back, earn money, put, put food on the table has been amazing. And I can't thank Bellator enough for it. All right. Thank you, Charlie. And wish to see more of you in the future. Thank you very much. Donna. Hey, Charlie. How's it going? Congratulations on the result. Uh, you mentioned you know getting out of shape. You mentioned that it has been a tough lockdown. Obviously, congratulations on uh, on, on the child as well. Thank um, you. Did you do you feel like the fight really? Do you feel like the pace of the fight would have changed if you'd gone into the second and perhaps he'd he'd had that chance? Let's say the doctor says, yeah, he has that extra break as well. Do you think that he he would have been been in in the the advantageous position then because of of the fitness? No, no, no. I, like I said, my my fitness and my cardio is one of the things that I think. Is one of the best things and one of my best attributes. I'm I'm always in the fight all the way to the last bell because my power normally carries the three rounds. Um, I've got the heart to just keep going. It don't matter whether you're, you're beating me from pillar to post, I'll still be in there um, all three rounds, giving it my everything. Um, and I don't think it would have made that much difference. I feel like the tide had already turned. I feel like he was, he was on the way out. I just didn't want to make a mistake of blowing my wad too early and, and then going, oh, shit, he's, he may, so excuse my language, he may um, start picking up the pace a little bit again. Like I say, he hits real hard, man. And I didn't want to make any mistakes. So um, now I feel like my cardio is always good. Even, listen, even when I'm really out of shape, I'm in there doing rounds upon rounds with some of the fittest guys that we've got in the gym. Um, so I will still always push the pace. Um, it was just hard getting the weight off. Do you know what I mean? My cardio was still good. I was still riding my bike to train and I was doing the extras. I was doing the miles running. Um, it's just hard to work on the joints and stuff like that when you're carrying the extra weight. So it's just difficult. So I, I having, felt good. Having watched him, uh, you know, on, on tape and having prepared in, yeah. in the way that you did for the fight, did you expect to be able to land as much and as cleanly as you did? Yeah, yeah, 100%. <clears throat> I, I felt like um, I was going to outbox him, stay long. He was going to try and kick, um, but I felt like my range would be able to catch him while he was kicking. And then I felt like he was going to try and brawl and put me down. Um, the, like I said, the one thing that surprised me was that I didn't establish my jab. I wasn't quick enough getting back out off of my jab. I felt like I was landing, but I was getting caught with that left hand, that winging left hook. He was quicker than I felt he was going to be. Um, and obviously, he wasn't keeping my right hand up high enough. Um, but I did feel like I was going to outbox him, and I felt like he'd be he'd be reaching and trying to close the distance, and I'd pick him off. Um, that's why I was, I was predicting end of the second, probably beginning of the third, because I felt like I'd pick him off. He'd be desperate trying to close in, and then I'd, I'd crack him on the way in. But... Uh, I, I landed heavy shots when uh, I had to change my plan a little bit once he started cracking me. So it's all good. I feel like I've got I've got that game. Do you know what I mean? I've got the all round game. I can stand out outside. I can box on the inside if I need to. I can grapple. I can get top position if I want. So I think as it shows, he took me down. I, I bounced straight back up again. It was okay. <clears throat> Lenny, how's it going, Charlie? What a win and an good. impressive Thank performance. You. A Thank war you. from straight. Uh, which, so as soon as the bell rang, it was a war. You hurt him. He hurt you. And yeah. your boxing, nonetheless, your boxing did look crisp in there today. Yeah. You know, you're hitting him with some right hands. You're hitting him with some really, really good shots. Yeah. Did you work on something in camp that you could capitalise against Crosby tonight? No, it was like I say, it was literally just staying, staying long on my boxing. Um, 
be careful of the calf kicks because I'm listen, he's got a great camp. Um, Kavner is a superb coach. They mm-hmm. all know um, what I fight like. Um, I speak to Kavner quite a lot. Um, and he would have watched my last fight where Wild had kicked the leg and done well with that. Um, so I presumed that's what they were going to come and do. Crosby's got some good kicks. He's got some good karate style sometimes. Um, he mixes it up well and he can brawl. Um, but I felt like my game <clears throat> and my strongest attributes were going to be behind my long jab, stick him hard with it. Because listen, I hit hard with it. It's a jab, it's a cross, whatever it is, right hand, left hand, I hit hard. And I felt like when I started cracking him with that jab, he's going to walk into one of my right hands. And like I said, I just got lazy on, on the jab, maybe on the exit, or, or maybe underestimated how fast he was, which let him get that left hand in. Um, but like I say, I'm not out. And unless, unless the referee is waking me up um, and he's dragging the guy off of me, I'm in that fight all the way to the end, no matter what. So uh, mm-hmm. even though he cracks me hard, I'm still swinging. Yeah, you showed an incredible part in this fight. Yeah. And uh, i got to ask about the stoppage. Do you, uh, yeah. I think it got recapped earlier, but do you think it was right to stop the fight? To be fair, I, I got a little look. I wanted to see him. So I've gone over to speak to him afterwards and I, I had a little look and it looks like he's cut the, it's his eyelid that's cut as well. So it's cut from like the inside and it's come across the top. So his eyelid's actually open on top of his eye, um, which is obviously dangerous. Um, I didn't see what it was to cut him. I don't know whether it's the elbow that I landed or, or some of the shots. Um, it didn't look nice. It looked like it was closing his eye. Um, listen, I, I always preferred to have the doctor stop it and um, he lives to fight another day. I, I never wish damage on anyone and, and, and permanent damage. You know what I mean, hopefully he'll get it glued or stitched up and he'll be back fighting again soon as the last thing you want is to have that ripped open or ripped off. Um, so from my point of view, listen, I'm not a doctor, I don't know, but it didn't look nice. It didn't look nice. Charlie, our last question comes from Stuart over at Gra- Grassroots Boxing. Yep. Uh, were you at any point concerned of tiring yourself out, trying to get the finish there before the end of the round? Yeah, slightly, slightly. I, was, <clears throat> I wasn't worried that um, I'd be too tired. I felt like when I could hear his corner saying that I was tiring and I could hear um, them saying it's 30 seconds left. Now, the referee had been in, obviously, tells us the rules and, and he's going to warn him once to move, then he's going to warn him a second guard time. And I heard him warn him once, but I felt like he was moving really well. He was defending really well on the bottom. Um, he wasn't just covering up. And even though I felt like the opening was there to finish him, if there was another minute or two, I think I could have pushed for it. But with 30 seconds left, I felt like if I did push too hard, he goes into the corner going, OK, I got out of here. I'm feeling good. His corner is going to be going, he's tired now and I'm tired. It maybe gives him a little bit of a boost to come out strong and start winging them punches again second round. So um, not that I was worried about it. I just wanted to be conservative and make sure... I wasn't making mistakes. Do you know what I mean? Last thing I wanted, like I say, he, he hit me with some good left hands. He hit me with one of the first left hands. I felt that it cut me, um, blurred my eye a little bit, and I couldn't really see for, for about 30 seconds or so. I was lucky he didn't rush in because I was trying to blink it out and it had blurred my vision a little bit. So I was like, all right, I've got to be careful. I've got to make sure he doesn't crack me with another one of them. So, uh, yeah, it was a more conservative take my time and pick him apart rather than, oh, shit, I'm getting tired. Because, like I say, I, I feel like I can go three rounds with anyone. Looks like we have one last question here. Go ahead, James. James, your line is now live. Come on, James. Hello. Hello, mate. Ah, uh, how are you, um, Charlie? So, a lot of these fights you go into, you seem to be the underdog. Yeah. After tonight's performance, do you think people may start realising how good you actually are? Um, I was saying before, I, had, I hope the media and the, the people on the outside and the fans and, and people like that will look and realise how good I am. Because a lot of people look and they just look at my record and the people and the fans and stuff, they're, they're looking at the sport and going, oh, great fight this and great fight that. When I'm on the undercard and they look at my record, people go, ah, yeah, it's not that great. And they don't tune in. Um, if you watch my fights and you watch how I fight and who I fight, I feel like I'm exciting. I feel like maybe I shouldn't be the underdog all the time, but I don't mind being the underdog. I enjoy that. I come out and I try and spoil people's parties. That's, that's fine. Um, I think the people in the know-how, um, like Bellator and like um, my opponent, like Kiefer, like John Kavanagh, like like all the, the guys in the know-how, I think they know how good I am. And that's why I'm getting put in these spots. And this is why they're putting someone like Kiefer, who is one of the massive prospects, one of the top prospects, they're putting him against me to test him, to see if he's 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 got that next step up at the moment. Do you know what I mean? So um, 
I don't mind being the underdog. Um, I'm just hoping that this will put me up there now and there. They'll start putting me a little bit more on the main cards, a little bit more publicity, and, and the, the wider audience will um, recognise me. I'm, I understand I'm a little bit older and I'm, I'm not as vocal on social media and I'm not um, very loud and, and, and stuff like that on the on the, the socials and things. Um, and maybe maybe I should do something different, but I want to look back at my career and and be proud of who I am and, and what I've achieved with not having to talk my way into it. Do you know what I mean? I want to achieve what I've achieved by my performances and and, and have people in the sport respect me. So um, fingers crossed they do. If if they don't, I'll just keep keep running along, keep getting the wins and, and keep upsetting people. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I'm happy, man. I'm just uh, loving being part of uh, Bellator and, and I can't thank friends and family enough and, and everyone for supporting. So. Thanks for that.